Hi, it's Alan again, uh, doing a screencast video for another digital storytelling program called Glogster. Uh, Glogster is basically a poster board online, you know, using a web space. The other nice part about it, you don't have to draw well. Your students uh, can import pictures as well as take a ton of, you know, pre-made graphics, and it's all free. First thing you want to do, Glogster itself is blocked at our school site um, because for some reason, anytime you go to the regular site, there's always a glog about abortion that shows up or other inappropriate things. So there's actually a glogster.edu. If you go to Glogster site and just click here, it'll take you to edu.glogster.com or you can just go in at that level. Um, as a teacher, you kind of get special privileges. Uh, you can get up to 100 accounts. You can set up more than one account if you obviously have more students than that. But uh, you can, it allows them to share online in the EDU space, which is safer. And uh, you, they don't have to have emails. You can create the accounts for them. It does randomize their assignment accounts, which is a little bit um, troublesome, but uh, it still works anyway. So let me just log in here. So the first thing that you do when you're in Glogster is that it is uh, pretty easy to use. So of course, I have to remember your name, which is my biggest problem on these sites. Um, once it logs you in, you get a dashboard and tells you how many accounts that you have. You can create a glog here. Um, you know, premium, you don't need. Uh, you know, it's a little bit busy, but if you scroll down, it shows you this is where I've en enrolled students. It shows me what the students are. They've renamed it with their own names. These are different glogs that they've made in class. So here's an example. Um, they've put in text. You know, one of the challenges is that not all the text boxes are very big. So you need to find ones that are. Um, so this was a glog about vocabulary. You know, I find it's actually fun. It's easier to teach conventions or other things that are kind of more challenging in a glog. So here is another one about Tom Newkirk um, so just kinda play with the different mechanisms and let's see I have one for spelling rules down here somewhere there's the one for the giver prepositions the rules examples different things to kinda make their own poster to remember and they can share it with the class or share it online and they can get comments here's one for spelling rules that I did um, it gives you a link and an embed code, so um, once you're done with it, you can share it that way. It's very, it's kind of difficult to print. You kind of have to take a screenshot, and the screenshot doesn't fit all on one page, so you have to take two screenshots and put them together in order to get a print version. But it can be done. So these are, you know, different uh, rules for spelling. You know, more interesting because the kids got to put them in a blog. So to create your own blog, you go up to the top. And you go to create a glog. There's two kind of menus, a little like Prezi, for each object. So there's the one over here, and then there's the one on each object. So you can remove any element by just clicking on it. You get this window. You get a trash can. If you don't want it anymore, you get rid of it. Okay, uh, you know, and these are different things. So this is actually a background. So you can go to the wall, change the wall to your own picture, or if you want clouds, you just click it and use it. And now you have a new background, kind of like wallpaper. Here, you have two options. So once you have it, you can just grab it and move it. If you hold down the, the clicker, if you hit edit, so here is my sample blog, the San Marcos Writing Project. Okay, you can change the font size. So this is pretty small. I don't even have to really highlight it. I can just click here. This is for fonts. I can change the font type. And I can change the font color if I wished. And I can make it bigger just here. Up and down. You know, you'll kind of fit it in the space. The, the space doesn't really change. And then it's relative. So once I hit OK, I can size it up or size it down from the corners. I can rotate it using this bar right here. Oops. Or this one. I can rotate around. 
And the other thing is that layering, you can put things on top or back. So it has a lot of pre-formatted graphics that are in here. It has animations, so some of these actually move. Um, or, you know, kids can upload their own images or take them from the web. So, say I wanted this. What's it going to name? Um, the sun is shining. So you see that it left once I hit use it. And then it's over here, and then I can, you know, manipulate it all I wish. So I grab it in the corner, can make it big, and put it in the corner, can rotate it, do what I need to do. Um, so texts, you know, the most as writing teachers, we want to use text. You know, this is the challenge part. So you, you know, if you want a title, you click on the title, and it just comes up with the title ones. So let's say I wanted this one. I'm going to hit use it. Puts it on the screen. Make sure it, you know, it disappears like that. If I want bubbles and stickers, are where you can fit the most text. <coughs> the challenge part is that not all of them are very big, so you kind of have to kind of select for yourself. And it's best for short pieces of text like poems because you can't really fit a whole term paper in here because it's just too small. So there's all kinds of things for that. And then you can actually even this is how you would embed video. So. Um, if I had video um, or images, I just hit upload. You know, I can find any image, download to my computer. If I want a black bear or an apple shadow, I just hit that, and then here it is. So now I just hit use it, and now any picture from the internet or picture I have on my computer, it can be part of my image. Um, and then for the text boxes, I just hit edit. And I can start writing. See, that was easy. The last part of it is when you're done, you just kind of hit save and publish. You probably want to give it a name. This becomes your, you know, your EDU, whatever your username, becomes your address. So it's kind of easy to remember. And then whatever you give as the blog becomes your title. So this is my sample. So it'll be called sample. I hit publish. And then I can either make it unfinished. It doesn't really help to make it unfinished. I can make it published or not. And I can put tags on it so other people remember. I think you have to put some kind of tag or it doesn't let you do anything. Um, so I hit save and finish. And now anybody could see it. So um, here's the, see the web address became my, whatever I typed as the title. You know, at my domain, I can get the embed code. Um, down here, I could share it to Facebook or a plethora of other options. So that is Clockster. Have fun.